party and see what's going down. <laughs> yeah, man. Welcome. We're live on the Louvers Happy Hour, Brainchild VHS. Um, really happy to have you here. I know we we actually met once or twice on virtual before this. Yeah. So that I think that you're one of the maybe the only guests I've had on so far that I've actually talked to for a little bit before this. Okay, yeah. So mm -hmm. we've got a little bit of a history, so hopefully this, yeah. will, this will go smoothly. Yeah. Not that we didn't really get into it too much in that conversation. We talked about music and, you know, possible collabs and stuff like that. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, man, I'm happy to have you here. And, you know, what? this is a really interesting one because um, I always said that this is kind of more of like just us meeting each other and talking. And when I was saying I was, was going to send you some questions, you sent me a bunch of questions. And that kind of works better. I kind of like that for the format. Yeah, it's like, you know, a little less of a, cause in a sort of a interview and, like, whenever I signed up for this, uh, I was like, wait a second, there's things I want to know, too. So <laughs> Yeah. No, I think that's good. I might I might do that going forward with other guests, you know. Um, but anyway, and you know what? I had my, uh, my list of questions that I wanted to ask you. Give me a second. And... Um, a lot of them were, I mean, you had awesome stuff that we're going to talk about, uh, but a lot of the questions that I was going to suggest are things you already were going to ask me. So it's kind of like, <laughs> you know what? Your list is great. Let's just stick with that. Uh, and that's it. You know? Yeah. Cut from the same cloth. I mean, look at us. We were shopping the same store. <laughs> we were shopping the same <laughs> Yeah. That's funny. Um, so, yeah, do you want to... Uh, Start it off then. You you want to go through some stuff that that you had written down? Yeah, yeah. First, well, for, it's, it's happy hour, right? So um, I came with a tasty, uh, tasty beer in my, my favorite Simpsons glass. I'm drinking a uh, Icicle Brewing Company Hazy IPA. All right, All right. Crazy fancy crazy. Stuff. Brewed uh, somewhere in Washington. I should know that, but I don't. Um, yeah, today's a Washington joint, uh, really, really good. And um, I don't know how plan long we plan on going, but my goal is to see how many I could drink during that time. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you, uh, you're representing – you're in Washington or you're in Oregon? Washington. Washington. So you're representing. I am not representing. I should have been, I guess. Um, but I do have my uh, Louvre's koozie, Ooh. now available on Bandcamp. But um, I I'm drinking Miller Lite. I, yeah. have I should have. I should have. Uh, you got the merch. Yeah, I should have grabbed one. Um, got, who knows where it's at though? I just moved too, so it's like the studio is set up. But that's, <laughs> that's yeah. like the first thing. But uh, there's still some work to be done for uh, other stuff. So it's definitely in a box with a bunch of tape somewhere. Do you have uh, you have koozies though? You have merch like that? Yeah. Oh, I don't. I don't. I don't have koozies myself. I have your koozie. Oh, that. okay. No, I yeah. thought you had your own. I was like, you know. Um, I mean, maybe someday, but uh, I mean, I guess if someone messaged me and was like, "Hey, bro, I need a koozie," then I would think about it. But so far, zero messages about yeah. that. So um, I would, I would you know. pick one up. They're not. They're not too bad. I, I use a company called Twenty Four Hour Wristbands. Okay. And they, they, you know, they're pretty reasonable. Is it Twenty Four Hour? Koozies too. Yeah, they just have like basic, like all kinds of just giveaway merch kind of stuff. You know. Do you really get it uh, no. in twenty four no. hours? Okay, no. they're pretty quick, but it's not in twenty four hours. I, you know, that's a weird name. Then why would they call themselves that? It just takes twenty four hours to process. On your end, order. do you see like a line through the screen? You would see it. I don't think so. I don't know. Something up. I was touching stuff. I shouldn't touch things. I don't see a lot. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't record that way. I don't think it will. All right. Anyway, um, yeah, going down this list, um, do you want to dive into the next uh, topic that you have here? or? Okay, yeah. I, I think uh, my second topic was kind of – it's a stupid – I decided that's a stupid story, and I don't really want to tell it. Um, we can get to it if we run out of ideas. Okay. But I uh, wanted to talk about the favorite BHS. Uh, do you have – do you have – have you acquired the Grail? You know what? Uh, if, what's your favorite one that you have? Um, it's really hard because I don't really. I collect to collect compilations. I really like people mm -hmm. that make like mixtapes. Um, so it's like you throw it on and it's like you know six hours of like 
Halloween content or Christmas content, like you're watching TV. I like stuff like that. Um, for Grail VHS, I, I really want to get a My Pet Monster live action movie. Okay. Something. But in terms of like my favorites, um, I'm a sucker for the classics, really. I have like favorite editions, I guess. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I don't know if I have a favorite, you know? Uh, what's, the, what's a couple of the classics that you really like? Um, I just like like if you can get like original editions of like, you know, Top Gun and stuff like that, because I love the bumpers, okay. the commercials and the advertisements that came with it at the time. Like to me, that's more important than the movie. So like, you know, like Ninja Turtles comes with the, Pizza Hut. you know, yeah, dude. And like, you know, you have that, right that, field. That's yeah, that, that, you know, that kind of stuff. You know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm cheesy when it comes to, to my tapes, but I watch them. And, uh, you know, I don't have anything. I, I have a box of sealed stuff, but I end up opening that too, which is bad yeah. for me, I think. We should, we should just, yeah, like uh, dress the elephant in the room about sealed. Uh, sealed <laughs> like, I, um, I'm not much of a sealed guy. I do have, I have one sealed VHS uh, that I like uh, that it's sealed. It's a Back to the Future from McDonald's from like the 90s. Oh, yeah. that's, that's what I mean. That's cool. That's not like... You can watch that a few times, but ultimately, like, yeah, like keeping it sealed for like the sake of, I like, of you know, uh, saving it or keeping it in good condition. Like, uh, ultimately, I want to watch it. Right? Yeah. So, you know, so I've been buying. Really cool movies. Yeah, I've been buying sealed with the intent of watching it just because I want a new tape. Yeah. You know, that's and like, like I don't order crazy like, stuff. Like, I think it's kind of sad too, yeah. right? Like, it's this was packaged in 1988 and nobody. Yeah, in their VCR to enjoy it. Uh, you and know what? Work. Honestly, like, I like stupid stuff. Like I just ordered The Shadow, <laughs> and I I ordered it sealed. But like that's a movie that I dig that nobody else is gonna want. I don't think that The Shadow is gonna like spike up in price. You that's know? where you find uh, some of the gems there. Like, uh, and 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 I also have that in common with you. Like I like a lot of movies that just nobody gives a rat's ass about, and so. Um, it's like, oh, sweet, yeah, like, nobody's asking for this one, so I can go pick it up. I don't even know if these are cult classics. They're just cult classics for myself. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I like those kind of movies. Stuff you grew um, up like with. Yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, so that's, that's what I think. I just got a cool, um, this is the other kind of stuff I'm into. Uh, I just got a big box of, like, free stuff that somebody was like, go through it, and I went through it, and they had the whole... Ken Burns jazz documentary in the box. Okay. There you I'm go. Like, taking that, I love that kind of stuff too. Ken Burns stuff. Okay. Yeah. I know you were a jazz guy. That's cool. I mean, I'm a Ken Burns guy, but I, I got into jazz. Feel that on you. Yeah, I was. I got into jazz more after I watched his documentary, and then I went to New Orleans, and then it was kind of like, all right, I get it now. With those two things, it's kind of like I kind of get it, you know. Heck yeah! Um, I am. I am like a. I mean, I pretty much love all types of music um but i couldn't talk jazz because i'm just like such a noob level like yeah. I don't even not that i could name. talk jazz but i could appreciate it now you know yeah yeah i mean yeah there, that there's some of the the people playing jazz and how they compose the songs and what they're doing with rhythm is like um way beyond just like where i'm at in yeah, my yeah, life, yeah as far as what i can do but I, it is a joy to listen to for sure so prize VHS, um, you want to just we could go down together. You have I, I got the list here too. Oh yeah. Um, so actually, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, I brought some show and tell. Yeah, yeah, very nice. I think here since it's a uh, I'm BC VHS. Um, I should bring VHS. So there's like different categories of prize VHS, right? Like there's just like my favorite movies, which you know. Um, Something like uh, the 1989 uh, Dolph Lundgren Punisher. Yeah, I, I love that movie. That's yeah, crazy. yeah, it's not like something that you know is like crazy rare or anything, but love it. Never selling, like never trading. Yeah. It's mine forever. <clears throat> then there's like the holy shit! I can't believe I found those tapes, and that one is an OG Miami Connection. Very cool. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Show tell my beer. Um, I found, I bought, I bought this big lot of tapes last year, 
and um, it was like 20,000 tapes. Oh. Literally a semi truck. Yeah, I was going to say, what do you do with 20,000 tapes? <laughs> I didn't Besides know. Besides getting in trouble with your I significant mean, other. The collector in me, when I saw it, was like, I, I first spot a little bit, and then I just couldn't sleep at night because I was like, what else is in there? And uh, I just wanted to dig through it, and the price was really good, so I bought the whole thing. Definitely bit off way more than I could chew. Yeah. Um, so what I ended up doing with it is uh, started vending, like, VHS swaps in Portland and, like, the retro video game con, stuff like that. Uh, dug through it with uh, me and all the, the VHS gang. Grange Boys, shout out. Um and uh like on top of one of the boxes, this is just laying, it's like minty brand new copy like of Iron Connection. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So that tape made the whole thing worth it really. It's like I'll probably never see one of those again in the wild and find one. So that's like my favorite tape I found. Yeah. Uh it was from that big VHS lot for sure. I have a. Uh... I have some tapes around me just because they're here. And um, this is something that I'm trying that I've been getting into that it's, it was pretty easy to get the first few, but now it's kind of getting difficult. I'm trying to collect the Oscars. So I have. Oh, have oh yeah. 1989. I have uh, 1986. I have 2001. And I have 1993. Okay. And they're entire. And. Some of like the the commercials that are on here and like the newsreels are like you're never gonna see those again. Um, no. like, like there's one of them like criticizing Batman '89 when it came out, wow. and they they're just like ripping it apart and they're like figure out why this movie is gonna be a flop at eight o'clock or something. And I, I wanna I gotta I gotta dig back into this tape because they're hours long. So when you see something cool, you're like you're never gonna remember it. But I'd like to dig that one out soon. But I like stuff like that, you know. Are, are we on the uh, uh, team? Uh, Billy Crystal was the best Oscars host. Uh, what do we think about that? Do you have a favorite besides Dude, that? Dude, it's so. Oh yeah, I mean, what do we work with now? Nothing. They, get, they might as well just have AI do it next year. But I mean, Billy Crystal. Yeah, it's it's a completely different. When you watch Billy Crystal, like I forgot, I was a child. Mm -hmm. When you watch him do it. Now it's like it blows your mind because he's just so good. Like yeah, he's a showman. He's putting on a show. He's doing yeah. a little bit more than, than hosting. So I always appreciated that. He's topical. He pokes fun at people, but then like he's entertaining and it's like he's endearing. He's like everything. People are not like that anymore. It's wild. So. Yeah, he's he's definitely uh, my my favorite host for sure. Um, but yeah, finding those, uh, I'd be into that finding that Oscar tape from the 80s or 90s with the commercials on it, like that would be a super fun watch. Another one that I have back here that I'm not going to try to drop my camera. Um, do you follow Video Force? Um, I don't know if I did, but probably. I'm familiar with Video Force, yeah. He makes like, you know, like cool looking slips and stuff. Okay. But this one, he actually did the tape for me. Oh, heck yeah. And it's Maverick. <laughs> okay, it's the new one. That's awesome. But it's completely panascanned and everything. So Hell yeah. that's really cool. So I like stuff like that, too. I do appreciate I got, people that are like, yeah, like bringing stuff to VHS, that uh, newer movies that, you know, we're never going to have the chance to make it to VHS because it's 24. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any new. I just got Summer of 84. Um Oh yeah, that one's cool. From someone on Instagram, and uh, it's, I think it's Broke Horror Fan is the uh, the one that did that one, and it's a really really nice case. Lunch Meat does. Um, oh, Lunch Meat. Really yeah, cool. there's like cool all parts of the VHS community, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, like like the newer movies on tape too. Um, I think the newest one I have is yeah, Summer of '84. I got uh, Lisa Frank. Frankenstein recently that was really a really cool one because it's like okay you know, yeah looks like it was supposed to be in that that, that way yeah that's because that movie seems like it, it was uh, meant for for tape for sure yeah so so let's keep it rolling what else do you got what else are we going to talk okay. about um let's go with a favorite 90s cartoon or 80s just favorite like i mean i know this is a hard one just, i was going to say as soon as i'm like i got it then for the, the, the other three pop in but I think I'm going to lead with the real Ghostbusters. Oh, you know, I like it. That's a good pick. Um, 
I'll, because, but this goes for a lot of like cartoons back then. The other one is like Batman, the original Batman animated series. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you watch the real Ghostbusters, it, it uses some real like mythology. They dig into like history and mythology and like make it like for kids. Yeah. But it's so watchable now. It's like kind of not made for kids. <laughs> like it's yeah, scary. It's something too. Right? Yeah, it's scary, and they have like they they have a like real history in there, and um, it's just really cool. I'm even into the extreme Ghostbusters. Okay. Even... <laughs> That's a good voice. Um, yeah. Did you know like the whole like uh, the real Ghostbusters thing? Like the whole. Thing I love them. You, like where the name is for, from? Yeah. Like why? Why they call it the real Ghostbusters? Because there was a previous cartoon called the Ghostbusters. Oh well, I've, I've yeah. Seen, but uh, has anyone? I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure if anyone on here has seen the, the first Ghostbusters cartoon. Um, I like how they, they kind of write that away. Um, so yeah, there's like the problem with the Ghostbusters name that they they got eventually. They own it now. But what's cool is when they. If you do, you remember the first episode of the real Ghostbusters? I do not know. So this is why they call it the real Ghostbusters, beside the licensing stuff in the show. The first episode of the real Ghostbusters is them coming out of the movie theater, having just watched Ghostbusters, and going, there's no resemblance. I don't look like Ackroyd. Come <laughs> on. So the show is supposed to be the real Ghostbusters. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. I did not know yeah. that. So, I need to re yeah. watch that. That's awesome. I, have, I, have a, I got like, the DVD collection or something, and I was watching it. A few years ago, and yeah. no, it's 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 cool. That's a good choice. I remember playing the NES game a bunch when I was a kid. Um, I remember being really hard. Yeah, and, all those games are tough. You can't play those games now. <laughs> um, so I think uh, for I mean I'm gonna kind of go a little bit basic bitch with this. Um, yes, but uh, oh yeah, obviously I couldn't, I couldn't not. I mean I couldn't not choose Ninja Turtles. Um, like I think. I, I'm pretty close to seeing every episode. When I was a kid, I had every figure up until the point where they started doing like Raphael as an astronaut and they started just going yeah. nuts with it. And then I couldn't keep up anymore. But uh, yeah, we had every Ninja Turtle, like went and saw the movie as soon as it came out, like got done watching it, practicing karate moves in the parking lot. Like just like my, one of my, I, I still, I'll still watch it today too. Like um, pop on a tape. Yeah. Uh, on yeah. Easter, I always watch the Easter special and um, love me some TMNT for sure. I, I got the the Burger King Kids Club ones. I have a bunch of those. Uh, that that was a, a happy find. That was early when I started collecting VHS. When you were like still wowed by the fact that you could still buy every VHS you remember, you uh -huh. know, I was like, didn't have it. It's like, yeah, of course they have it. You you know, but it's sometimes they get expensive. Like, uh, but. Yeah, dude, like, real Ghostbusters is kind of like a obvious pick, I think, too. Though, But the Ninja Turtles, real Ghostbusters, those were the ones I watched, you know, yeah. mostly. I'm kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, like, jealous that I didn't, I, didn't even, I didn't even think of that. Like, uh, um, that's a good pick. What about the, are you a Silverhawks guy? Or, no, no. no. What is that? Uh, have you ever seen Silverhawks? No. I had not like, like Highly recommend it. I, I used to watch it all, all the time as a kid, and then as I got older, I remember like asking people like when they were talking about like favorite cartoons and stuff, like Silverhawks, and they'll be like, "What the hell are you talking about, bro?" Um, so like, a, but yeah, like the Transformers knockoff. Kinda, yeah. I mean, they're like these uh, people in these silver hawk suits <laughs> flying around in outer space. Like the intro, uh, and the, the intro and the uh, intro music is amazing. One of them's like a Kobe guy that like plays the guitar. And, yeah. Um, it's kind of it's actually you know what it's more of a rip off of. It's more of a rip off of like Masters of the Universe. Okay. I think. That's kind of how it plays. Uh, it's like yeah. a Masters of the Universe sort of thing. Also great. A, a great. one that I remember that's kind of like a cartoon fever dream where it's like, I sh this is one where I'm like, do they even have it? Do you remember Bruno the Kid? Oh, yeah, yeah, the Bruce Willis. Uh... Dude, I would watch that, like, it would be on at, like, 6 or 7 a.m. before school, and I'd be getting up for school and, like, turn it on, and it's, yeah, it's Bruce Willis as a child, international spy, and nobody knows. Mm -hmm. It's, like, it was so weird, you know? Yeah, 
That uh, I I used to have that on tape. I'm not sure. It's probably in the storage unit somewhere. But like, uh, yeah, that's a really really weird one. I I, I would I need to read into the story of like how that came to be. Like, I knew he did you know the Br uh, Bruno returns or whatever the name of his his blues album he did. Yeah. The return of Bruno. Yeah, yeah. And um, and then I just said, what was the conversation? <laughs> like, hey, you know what? We should do great a cartoon, great album. Yeah. We should turn this into a kid's cartoon. Um, I never wa I saw that way later. Like I, I never saw that as a kid. Um, I think I saw it out of like oh, actually yeah. Uh, uh, Video Horizons uh, in Astoria had a copy of Bruno the Kid for sale, and I was like, "What the hell is this?" And started looking it up. I'm like, "No way!" So yeah. I learned about it way later, and I just thought about uh, just talking about that reminded me of another cartoon. I totally forgot. It's like close second. Denver, the last dinosaur. Don't know that one either. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. I gotta look um, these up. It makes me think, like, are these regional <laughs> ones? Or they got to be, like, everywhere, right? Well, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure Denver was, like, a national thing. Like, But the weird thing about Denver is I never watched it on TV. My memories of watching Denver were, like, us renting it all the time. Yeah. And I don't know how that came to be or how we heard of it or if my parents were just like, here, you like this, uh, or what the deal was. But we used to go to Blockbuster, or applause video, Aardvark video, yeah, yeah. and uh, uh, rent them. And I, and I don't think I ever saw an episode on TV, but I used to rent it all the time. But, yeah, the theme song kicks ass. They find a dinosaur who has a personality. He also, like, plays guitar, wears sunglasses. Good. Super yeah. 80s and cool. Yeah. Kind of talks. A little bit, um, All right. like Gizmo style talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, check. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Denver, the last dinosaur. Um, they have a. They have an Instagram. I don't know who runs the Denver, the last dinosaur yeah. Instagram. Yeah, yeah. But they're doing good work. They they it's updated all the time, and they keep it like relevant. Like they'll do a Denver meme about whatever is going on, and they usually nail it. So yeah. highly recommend. Yeah. I I gotta check that out. I gotta check both of those out. You gotta send me the after what we do, like the after out, after action report on this one. Oh, yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I think you'll, I think you'll dig Denver for sure. Cool, cool. I shouldn't ask that question because now we gotta talk about it. I can't. Uh, all I want to do is talk about cartoons, but we should. <laughs> yeah, it's a deep topic. Yeah, it's a deep should. topic. We should, what do we, we got should, next? Uh, what do we got next? Roll to the next one. Let's see here. See you. Whatever. Uh, how you want to do it? I mean, you, I got some responses to some of these, like things that I follow up on, but most of them, like, you know, just get into it. Uh, okay, so we talked, we, we did like VHS and cartoons and movies and stuff like that. So then we we'll switch gears to music. All right, cool. And um, I, the question I wrote down was like, what are the summer jams you're rolling with? And I guess I mean, like, I'm looking for like the all timers, like, like Every summer, the song's going on. Yeah, yeah. Like an, an ultimate summer jam for you. Yeah. It's really difficult, man. Like, I guess I have, have like, summer mixes that I like. Okay. But, um. Do you appreciate a good mix? I like, um, Springsteen's Alive album. Okay. Um, it's like, I forget what the year range is, but it's like live 70 something to 80 something. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, yeah. But it has such that, like, if you put, you're sitting outside in the summer, you turn that album on, you hear the crowd noise, and it just, it just has that vibe of, like, an outside concert mm -hmm. in summer, Thunder Road, like, you know, he does um, uh, Jersey Girl, Tom, uh, you know, Tom Waits. Mm -hmm. um, re really cool album, really cool album. He tells, like, like stories about, you know, when he was a kid, he had context and stuff, and, like, I kind of just like that as like a summer album. I'll probably think of something as we're talking, but um, for like a song, summer jam, you know, um, I don't know. I'm gonna go with that. I'm just gonna use that collection okay. as my really good vibe. Man. He's got a lot of like uh, a lot of his like uh, '80s popular stuff has a lot of like melodies that I think lend themselves to summertime sounds, like a uh, Glory Days. Um, yeah. Uh, Lonely Heart, um, just that that kind of sound, like um, definitely. 
like that de- definitely sounds like 80s summer for sure yeah yeah um like, trying, that, I think, like sherry darwin you ever hear that song you know that that song sherry darwin i don't think i dude, do no dude it's it's about it's hot out and he just wants to go to the beach and he says there's girls mel- melting on the beach they're so fun but they're so out of reach and he's saying because i gotta he basically has to drop his his mother-in-law or his girl's mother off at the unemployment agency <laughs> And he's so mad about it, and she's being annoying in the car. And that's what the song is about. It's summer, and it's hot out, and he wants to go to the beach, but he has to take his, like, mother-in-law somewhere. Very like, relatable. It's, uh, that's on the on the river as well, which is actually – that's the record. Okay. Right here. All right. Yeah. yeah. I, I do really like how Bruce is kind of a storyteller. Um, it's just something that uh, yeah. is, is, you know, not super popular these days, but, like, are – super prominent i guess but yeah like songwriters that are really good at like telling that story where you can describe the song and be like oh it's funny he wants to go to the beach and he's like taking his mother along and details like just get a play my yeah. office it's like what like that's that's cool um it's funny because there's like this backup vocal in the song where he's telling her like if she keeps talking she'll be she'll be walking and then oh if she keeps talking she'll take the subway back to the ghetto tonight and then the backup vocal is oh <laughs> It's, it's just really silly of a song. Wonder if that was Max Weinberg. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably. Anyway, I'm thinking like uh, a goat summertime jam. What do you got? Carry me by Mister Mister. All right, cool. But cool. I like if that song comes on and it's like yeah, it's like sunny out, windows down. Like I, I can't. I struggle to think of a song that just sounds more summery than that chorus. And then when they bust, yeah. they break, they break out the music, and they just have this like four part harmony going on. It's just like inject that into my vein. So yeah. that's a big one if you want to go like '80s style. Um, another like uh, older song, but not necessarily like '80s pop rock or anything. Would be like Kodachrome by Paul Simon. Um, yeah, I put I I am trying to <laughs> little segue here. I'm trying to like create a Spotify playlist of the greatest songs ever written and that's on it that's that's one of them but like to get on that list is impossible like and so yeah. it's only like four songs long so far <laughs> so, yeah yeah because every song about i like this song but should it make the list the song ever written is it, is that song it, ever, is i mean it's all subjective but it's like i'm trying to put stuff that like is like not even debatable yeah. but someone sees that list and they're like yep yeah <laughs> It's really hard, but yeah, Kodachrome, awesome summer jam. I will put that on repeat, uh, jam out to it. Um, oh, what a night by the Four Seasons, also uh, awesome uh, summery song, especially the drum beat and uh, piano. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think what else. I mean, yeah, Beach Boys is it's too easy. I could go with I'll- go with. Like uh, one of my favorites of all time, I think, is Waterloo Sunset or The Kinks. Okay, I like, like it a lot. Um, you know, but there, that's a it's a really hard question of like best song. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, it's like what song do you like the most? Yeah, boys, you're back in town. Ooh, we got yeah, it in the chat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they hit the the harmonizing guitars, that's definitely a song that whenever it goes on, I feel like I just get in a good mood instantly. Yeah, that's a also a good one. Um, okay, we've got the summer jams. Um, uh, okay, yeah, one question I really wanted to ask you about was, um, I thought, like, I know you were playing live, live yeah, shows. I'm actually playing it soon. Okay, cool. Um, and I got my, um, uh, to the left here, I got my, my mixing board and some synths that I'm messing with, and yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's different, man, it's different. Um, I'm playing, it's funny, I'm, uh, uh, we'll talk about. I want to talk about this too, but I'm going to VHS Fest okay. on on Friday, and then I'm playing on Saturday, and then my sister is getting married oh, on Sunday. Man, so, Weekend, uh, all weekends right there. I'm pretty sure, sure it's going to happen, but <laughs> I obviously the Sunday it, the Sunday takes precedent. But but it's it's fine. Um, but yeah, so playing live. What did you want, want to know about it or what? So you're doing like a, a solo deal, right? Like there's no band. It's just, now, and are, so you do oh, like yeah. backing tracks, but you play guitar with them? I made 
case with the backing track. I tried to avoid it. Like, so one of the, my main synths is the Roland JDXI. Okay. It has four synths in it. It's mm-hmm. like a little box, like little short keys, but it's for playing live. What would you say? Of magic. Yeah. It has, yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it has a drum machine, it has an analog synth, and two polyphonic synths. Okay. So you can, like, build the whole track in it. Um, so I, my plan was, was I'm going to put my songs into this thing. And, and I programmed a bunch of my songs in it, but they just they don't sound the same. They sound thin. And I talked talk to a bunch of people. And, I, you know, I've been going to a lot of shows out here with different people that I know now that play. Um, and everybody plays the back, back track, so I kind of made peace with it. So... I'm yeah, I mean, doing the- um, yeah. there's a lot of pros to that too, especially if you're if like you're you're doing music and it's your baby and um, uh, doing back, back and tracks like you. I like uh, I think of it like the nice way to say it, like avoiding yeah. just like the pitfalls of like you bring another person in and all of a sudden it's like another opinion about what yeah. you should do about the song, and it's just like easier to deal with when you're you're trying to like recreate your sound just as one person i think um i i've tried i tried to do a get a band together to play some uh bcbhs stuff or kind of a way back like 2018 or 19 definitely was more on the the metal side and i really didn't like the experience because I didn't really like bringing songs to the table and having everyone play them. Like a band to me is more of like a, a collaborative thing, right? Like I like getting together with people, writing a song. I don't like bringing the song to people and being like, play this part. Like it just wasn't very fun. Um, and I think the drummer had to have like butt surgery or something like that. So we ended up not working out, but uh, so, <laughs> so I ended up just like, screw it. It's a solo deal. And I haven't even, really thought about doing live um some of like the backing tracks is 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 a thing it's like i have a backing track itis as far as uh <laughs> never knowing when to stop adding them and um yeah. so it's like oh man like i'm gonna be rolling with like 64 backing tracks i don't know if that's gonna work and so and i'm so, not playing um, you play with a laptop no i i haven't played a a, a brain trial vhs show um I, the only time, my only, like, live experience is uh, playing with a band, which yeah. I did all, all the way up until 2020. Um, I, was in a band, I was in a band from, like, 15 years old to 40 years old. And then, um, like, pandemic hit, things got weird. And that's when I really dove into, like, solo thing and, and yeah, yeah. found out that I really loved it. I mean, one of my favorite parts about playing in a band, besides, like, playing live shows was uh, going to the studio. Yeah. So it was like, wait, well, hey, what if I can just go to the studio all the time? So. Yeah, that, that's the story with a lot of people, man. Like, I kind of also tried to learn as much as I could during pandemic time. And, um, yeah, um, it. I played, this will be my, like, third or fourth show live. And it's good. I, I, I might want to get a band together in the future because, like, I played in bands my whole life, too. Mm-hmm. Until like around that time, um, but I have the backtrack, which is basically like an MP3 backtrack, and I have my guitar, and I have a synth that I do some sprinkles with. Do you play a you know uh, to a click? No, like the backtrack has everything on it. It's really like fully loaded, except for vocal and guitar, okay, and some of the synth parts. And I mix in some of the. Because the synth I use also can load full songs into it, and I can build them up. Okay. So I can do a little of that as an interlude, and um, you know, it's kind of as an you know ease into it. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's it's cool. Like I think that it was well received when I did it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do it again. But I do play with like I bring a board with me, okay. and I plug a USB stick in with the backtracks on it. So I'm like so I'm like I haven't gone to full laptop yet. Mm-hmm. I'm still, you know, but maybe, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think yeah, as you go along, you'll like uh, it'll evolve naturally, and you'll you'll know when the time is right to like take that that step. Yeah, I, I, kudos to you though. Like, I, I'm like secretly jealous. I, I would like to do something like that and play songs live. Um, 
the the Marnie album that we released in 2022. Like she lives in Kansas City and I live out here, so kind of logistically really hard to play a live show. But yeah, yeah. I just really wanted to do one. I was like, can we just? Oh man, we could just do one show cool. with her singing the vocals, and I just like feel like it would be epic. But we haven't got around to it yet, so maybe someday. Yeah, yeah. We're going for another. All right. It's happening. You going with the glass? Yeah. Uh, back in the, my, my teenage years and 20s, I was just slamming past the ribbon from a can. Now Good. that I've gotten older, I'm all snobby yeah. about it. And I only want hazy IPAs. And I got a pour in a glass. So I think it tastes better. Yeah. It's ridiculous. When you, when you spend a little money on it, you got to, you know, you go with the glass. I only want to drink four packs that cost $28. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, uh, yeah, our, our local breweries, we got two on Staten Island that are really great. Um, and, but it's expensive stuff, man. Oh, you yeah. pay for that for premium. But it's good. I like to support as much as I can. Um, you know, they got good stuff going on out here with that. I, I feel that same way about the i was kind of blown away actually like so i'm from missouri originally i'm from kansas city originally and like, okay. moved out to the pacific northwest uh in 2014 and kc loves their beer but holy shit do people out here love their beer and i remember the first time i realized i was like you know uh the cliche we're not in kansas anymore was um went to a gas station like just down the street from my apartment in Vancouver, Washington. And um, I walk in and there's like a line and people have like growlers. And I was like, what's yeah. the deal? And he's like, oh, he's like, he's like, yeah, we have 40 beers on tap. And I was like, you have 40 beers on tap in a gas station? And um, yeah, and you, the, yeah, there's micro brews and craft brews everywhere out here. And uh, I don't know, I don't think I've ever had a bad one. Like everyone's really, really good. And, um, so I definitely spoiled with like uh, unlimited amounts of really really excellent beer out here. So I feel lucky. Growler thing was big out here for a while too, but like I just mostly go can. But but it's cool. Like I brewed for a little while. Like I did a few batches, so I have a bunch of growlers from both the craft brew thing that happened, but also from trying to brew beer one a few times. So now I just have all these growlers. So, but I should go and get them, you know, that used to be a thing. Like, I, I haven't done that in a long time, get a growler fill. I, yeah, I haven't done that either um, in quite some time. Um, there's a lot of options to do that out here. I should, we, should, we should go get growlers filled together. Yeah, we'll do but a lot of But, like, you'll do one there. I'll do one here. Hard to beating in unison. Kind of thing. <laughs> I actually have a growler koozie that fits around okay. the growler, but what? it has a neck. It has a neck strap, like it goes around your, around your body. Because it's that's next level. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 hardcore. I do want to uh, mention that, like, I will. There's a time and place for like, for cans. Like, like uh, I'm not always. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, 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 pool parties, going camping, floating down a river. Very like, nice. Like that sort of thing. It's cans and cans only. Um, but. Sitting in the comfort of my air-conditioned apartment, <laughs> I want a a nice hazy port in my favorite Simpsons class. So I got some questions about, um, or like this goes with what we're kind of talking about. Um, where you live in North Northwest, um, you put you put a question thing here that you wanted to talk about about that. That you live you live close to Astoria. Yes, um, very close, and. That's that's Goonies Town. Mm -hmm. I forget that it's Short Circuit Town. Oh yeah. But there's one more movie. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles three. I didn't know. Oh, is that there too? <laughs> yeah. Um, what one else more? One. Kindergarten Cop. Kindergarten Cop. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's funny because I only knew about Goonies and Kindergarten Cop really, um, which is really interesting because what's what's the thing about a story that that at that time. Not only did they film all those movies there, but they featured Astoria as like the spot the movie is filmed. Yeah, like it's a um, it's a character. I, I the only way I, I like I my 
the ultimate answer is I don't know. But what I can tell you is that, like, my first impression of going there was, like, this town is a living postcard. Um, okay. it's, it's just, like, uh, and so, like, visually, I think for, like, film, um, you pick that up in movies like The Goonies. Um, like, it, you just have this little town filled with, like, old... Uh, kind of like Victorian style homes on this hill that's like facing out the Pacific Ocean. It's like the very edge of the United States. And it's like, you have the small town vibe, like the water's right there. Like uh, just a really, really pretty, quiet, peaceful little town. And so um, I can see why, you know, someone would come there uh, and see a story and be like, I'm making a so, movie in this town yeah. and I'm yeah. going to make people know it's in this town, you know, like, yeah, yeah. So, I totally get it. Like I, I, uh, and I, I go there kind of a lot. Um, <laughs> kind of obsessed with it. Um, How far are you from there? What's like you drive up there? Yeah, I just moved closer actually. So I, I lived in Vancouver, which is about an hour and forty minutes away, and I just moved to Kelso, Washington, which okay. is an hour away. So now I'm one hour. Away. All right, that's not bad. You know. 40 minutes closer. Um, since I've lived out here for almost two months, and I've been out there like three times already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, test out this story I drive, see what's going on. But yeah, uh, the short, uh, so the short circuit house, uh, you can uh, Airbnb it. I don't know if you oh, know yeah? That, but, uh, I may have done it a couple times already. Um, they don't have the robot there, do they? Well, have the what? They don't have the robot, do they? Um, he's got a lot of replicas, like uh, not like a full – I. I imagine, yeah, he's going to get a life like this. This dude will get a life size one. I'm sure. Yeah. Like, he's hardcore about it in the best way possible. Um, but it's really, it's really inexpensive. Literally, the best view in the whole city. Like his deck, you're just like looking over the Columbia, opening into the Pacific Ocean. <clears throat> you got the big story of uh, bridge right there, like. It's absolutely breathtaking. Um, he's got like a toy museum in there, like a short circuit memorabilia museum in there. Yeah, it's um, very, very cool. Um, he's on, Insta like, I think he's on Instagram as a short circuit house. Oh, yeah, I've seen, and, uh, I've seen, that. I've seen that. Yeah, <clears throat> that's him. Nice dude. Um, and yeah, I definitely, <laughs> I stayed out there once, and then, like, uh, when my brother came to town. I was like, I know where we're going. And you haven't lived until you've watched. Short circuit in the short circuit <laughs> house, it's yeah. like um, unbelievable. Um, yeah, the story's cool. Uh, uh, love living, I, I love the coast. I, I hope one day that uh, my journey will take me there and I'll end up being a Oregon coast guy or Washington coast guy. Like, um, hasn't yet, but I keep on getting closer to it. So, I just got like, the Goonie stuff out there, Goonie stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, they, uh, so, they actually have the rock formations in that beach or whatever, or is that made off the movie? The beach is, in, the beach is Cannon, uh, Cannon Beach, which is actually about, like, 20 minutes away. Um, in the movie, they make it seem like it's right next door. Like yeah. they're, they're, like, riding their bikes there. I don't think anybody's riding their bikes from a story. Yeah, yeah. Maybe somebody is, but not those kids. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, like, 20 minutes away, so the rock formations are really there. Cannon Beach is absolutely – Breathtaking, like one of the coolest beaches I've ever been on. Um, they you could they have a viewpoint kind of like where the Fratelli's house was, I believe, but that is torn down. Okay. Uh, the uh, uh, jail in the movie, in the beginning see. of the movie, that yep. is the uh, film museum, like Oregon Film Museum. Oh, that's and, awesome. Yeah, so you can go there and walk around all sorts of Goonies. They like Data's outfit and a bunch of like Goonies memorabilia stuff. And then they have a thing in the back where you can film a scene. Like they have cameras <laughs> set up where you can like film a scene and have it emailed to you. Like, yeah, yeah. A lot of cool Go Goonies merch. There's Goonies all over all over the town. Um, Ever like a lot of jail or it was always like the film museum. What, what's that? Was that ever a jail or it was always the film museum? You know what? I don't know. I'm guessing at some point it yeah. was a jail. I was like someone who knew what the hell they were talking about with join and correct me but uh i'm thinking it, they're like when you go in there's cells and stuff like so i'm thinking like it had to be at one, something at one point at some point in history it was an actual jail yeah yeah uh, but 
Mm. Very cool. Um, definitely somewhere I always take uh, any visitor or anything. Yeah, like yeah. That, so. That's awesome, man. I, yeah, I'd love to get out there sometime. What makes me curious with the Goonies is like, what is the history? of piracy in that part of the country because what would the hell pirates what are they doing up there you know um, again i don't know but but i would say this okay i went to the uh this was like 2014 so it would have been like the some sort of anniversary for the goonies uh 30 maybe okay yeah. um they had a big they have a big like anniversary party in the town as they have like an 80s convention and food vendors and all sorts of crazy stuff going on and um went there and i shit you not it was like from the movie i'm like standing by the the shore by the water of the uh the columbia river and i look up and someone has someone is sailing a fucking pirate yeah. ship like, yeah like a life-size <laughs> <laughs> like from the movie, like a legit pirate ship, and I, I think I literally said like Holy Mary, Mother of God. Um and uh I have pictures of it somewhere, but I was like I asked the same question, I was like, Who owns a pirate ship? And how can I hang out with them? <laughs> yeah, exactly. The truly outrageous eighties. Do you have a, a knowledge on the on the Goonies you wanted to share about that? Oh yeah, please do. I still consider myself a Kansas City person, so I'm yeah. like still, even though I've been here like nine years, like I feel, still feel like a tourist, and so I don't know everything about everything. I'm just like. Always my thought is like, because I'm a, I'm a big history person. Like that's another topic you have here. What are your other things that you're into? And it's kind of like I understand I understand the whole Caribbean stuff. I understand like the privateer things, but like I just can't see the what are they doing up up in Astoria. You know, but there might be a thing. There might be a thing, you know. Maybe, well, maybe, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe they weren't just hanging out in a story. Maybe it was like, that's just where one I really ended, ended up. Because yeah. it was like, this is the last place anyone will ever think to look at for me. So maybe it was like, a, this is like the opposite of Pirate Town, but that's why you went there. Yeah. Just spitballing here. I, I, I buy it. I was going to say, so I have a few things in tandem with that, but like I have, uh, so I'm in Staten Island mm -hmm. and we're close to New York. A lot of movies are filmed in New York in general, but we have a few movies that were featured here. Um, they do a lot of filming now and they make it look like other places okay. just because it's, it's kind of like, it looks like, like New York, but there's not a lot of people around. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, so they do that. But like Goodfellas, okay, a lot of shot out here. Um, do you know Easy Money? With a yeah, yeah, Ronnie, Ronnie Danger Dangerfield. Field. That's completely shot. Like when you watch that, it just looks like where I grew up. Okay, you know? so that, that's awesome. That's cool. And there's another movie called He Thinks He Knows When You're Alone, like an old horror movie. Okay, I've never seen that one. These aren't, these aren't, you know, except for Goodfellas. That's about it. But uh, He Knows You're Alone is a uh, it's completely shot in like the town I grew up in. Okay. Um, I think that Tom Hanks might be in, but it's like an early slasher. Okay. It's like late seventies maybe or something. You know. Hell yeah, that's awesome. Uh, do you ever have you ever visited like uh, any of the like especially like the Goodfellas places? Yeah, no, they're like just places that are around like the shots. Mm -hmm. um, the Godfather house is on Staten Island oh, from awesome. the movie. And that I never visited because it's kind of like secluded. Like there's a, a little pockets of like wealthy people that are hard to find, like twisty, turny roads and stuff. Mm. Uh, but the good, uh, the Godfather house is on on Staten Island. Okay, but that's awesome. But yeah, because it, it just got me thinking of that when I was thinking about, you know, it's not it's not the Goonies and Kindergarten Cop and Short Circuit, but we got we got a few. Uh, yeah, yeah it's I mean, the Godfather. Those, <laughs> Goodfellas is pretty pretty legit. So yeah, well, yeah, that. That's between here and Queens. Queens and Staten Island look similar. I think it might be cheaper to film at the, especially at the time on Staten Island. So like a lot of it is Staten Island. That could you know? be also the answer to our why Astoria question. Like who knows what sort of tax breaks were going on it in Astoria. Probably good. Yeah. In like the eighties and nineties. Um, so that could have been part of it too. Like it's super cheap to film here. So um. 
I'm looking down the list here. Oh, yeah. Me, me too. Shane, I love visiting the movie locations. Absolutely. Um, yeah, New York, if you're ever in New York, we got a lot of stuff out here too. You got the Ghostbusters house out here. Oh, hi. You know. So, uh, when, movie locations. Uh, one thing I really wanted to know was, um, like, what's next on your horizon for, like, what you want to do musically? Like, uh, where you want to go? What do you, what's your, your vision for what Louvers is doing next? I, um, I always have plans, but, I, you know, you just got to get to work kind of thing. Um, so, I'm in the process of recording a second, like, I'm in the process of recording an album that I'd like to do on cassette again. A physical media album. Um, I'm hoping that it's a longer one than the last one I put out on physical. The last one I think had like six tracks. I'd like to push it to like 10, you know, like a real. Yeah. Um, I'd also like to do another Halloween EP. I have a few, a few of those. And I think like those, because there's like an official time that it has to be released, it makes a deadline for myself. Uh -huh, okay. Um, but, uh, so right now, over the summer, I have some extra time. I'm going to be working on the, the new album. So I'm, I'm looking to release another another cassette. I'm looking to put out a Halloween album. Um, and I, I just like to play live more, you know? Um, I think that's badass. And I also think you should continue, like, uh, doing that sort of journey. Like, um, like I said, Envious, um, I think it's really cool, like, taking your sound and what you're doing. And I'm always a big fan of putting on a show like so um i think that's really rad so yeah yeah that you want to do that more and the more, the more i do it the, the easier it'll be like you do it once every three months or something and it's kind of nerve-wracking you do it once a month i'd like to do once a month mm -hmm. you know i think it's doable it's just that like people got like the show i'm playing in july is a, a promoter that i know saw me play and never knew who I was and came up to me and was like, you want to play this other show? And that's how you keep the ball rolling is like, you just yeah. do it and people will get to know who you are kind of thing. So that, that's really what I'm looking to do. Um, do you ever do like, um, mixed media? Like, like, uh, like you're maybe like you play a live show. Um, and obviously you're inspired by all, all sorts of like, you know, rad, like eighties, nineties, pop culture. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff, like playing like a, a video that like, match like doesn't necessarily have to like match the music exactly but like yeah, so I, I did that my first show going. it's funny my first show I played was in my friend's uh my friend threw this big party and he had a, a big projector screen that he set up one of those inflatables okay and he didn't he I was like what are you gonna play on and he's like I don't know so I brought my VCR and I brought a stack of tape and I just threw on some like mixtapes like I said like summer mixtapes and i threw it on behind me and it was just like wild stuff you know like commercials and people at the beach and like different cartoons and it, it worked out really well so stuff like that i like but um cool. you know that kind of thing that adds the whole like putting on a show yeah. idea um, so you know it's just that playing solo and being myself it's uh it's a lot because it uh you know it's a lot of equipment you know, I'm bringing amps and I'm bringing synths and I'm bringing a mixer and now I'm bringing a projector. And <laughs> That's the one thing I don't miss. I, yeah. I miss a lot of things about playing live shows. I miss, miss the people, miss uh, the, you know, playing, getting a crowd energized and just the energy that comes from the room. I do yeah. not miss hauling my amp and all sorts of other bullshit across town on a Wednesday night at like 10.30 p.m. Like, uh, I don't miss that. Yeah. I mean, I've downsized pretty good. Like, I don't play a giant amp anymore. Like, I play a – I have a PV Classic 30 I play. Okay. Which is still, you know, but it's my, – my thought is, like, if I'm going to play anywhere that requires something bigger bigger than that, they're going to mic it. Like, there's no reason to bring a, a stack. Like, come on, stop. Did they mic go, everything. Did you go through that phase, though, where, like, you felt like you couldn't – Not personally. Play? Like, I was That's always – I started out – yeah, I started out from like an acoustic uh, background, so I, I kind yeah. of also have that bias of low, low maintenance. But um, but when I watch bands play, 
first of all, something like a Blues Junior, which is a tiny amp, or a PV Classic 30, which is a little bigger, those are loud as fuck amps. Yeah. Like, and they sound better loud. Yeah. Like, you don't need anything bigger than, like, a 30-watt tube amp, you know? I, I realize this now, but talk to me maybe, like, 15 years ago or so, or uh, earlier, like, uh, I was the guy that was, like, I brought the half stack to the tiny bar. Um, <laughs> It felt on one. like it wasn't enough. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm sure the people that <laughs> were standing in front of you, they felt like it was enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And then you realize, like, then you look back and it's like, yeah, like, um, in, you know, in the last, like, before the, the pandemic happened and I was playing live shows a lot, like, yeah, I would just drop, like, a combo amp or even just, like, a one-speaker amp and more than enough. And then it was like, you stop and think, like, what the hell was I doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, why, yeah. Did I, why did I think this was a good idea? That's funny. Yeah, but that's that's what we, you know. That that's part of the thing is you go through that and then you realize, and especially because I'm I have so much equipment now, I'm really like fighting myself on. The, I need to downsize, downsize. But it makes a good show, and you know what? I always prided myself in breaking, setting up and breaking down fast. I'm not one of these people that linger. So keep it professional. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Um, what about the so is your the synth you take live, um, the Roland is that your favorite synth? It's the one I use. I would say I would say it's probably my favorite. Okay. Um, it's a little guy. It's it's like uh, you know there's not much to it. I you know obviously like my synth that I record with is like a controller. Okay. You know I have the Akai. So like okay. that's the one gets used the most. But I have this one here. That I'll show you real quick. I'm a really big fan of Show and Tell. This is see what the uh, J JDXI. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Heck yeah, that looks nice. The black on, on red make it very difficult to look at, so that's nice. Now, <laughs> you know what's funny is like I perform in sunglasses, and oh, okay, yeah, I, it's uh. You perform in a dark venue, so I bought a bunch of lights for myself. But it's it's got this. Um, I kind of do that. You're you're a braver man than I. Yeah. There's a dude that I follow. I don't know if you follow it, named Ghost Stalker, and he's the guy who kind of introduced me to that machine. And he has the one that was limited, where it's actually red on black, and it looks awesome. Oh yeah, I do like the red sense. The Nords are red, like, and they just have a cool like that red on black, like. Uh, oh wait, it's not a red sense. It's a Black synth with red on it. It's like a it's a red synth okay, with yeah. black. Okay. Right. Mine is the other way around, and it's like difficult, but it looks like it looks like futuristic. Like when you look at it, it looks like some RoboCop shit or like some <laughs> Space Odyssey. You know, but but uh, in practice, it's kind of like. But it's it's a very cool machine. It's a very cool machine. I yeah, I don't know if I'm good enough at a, if a piano player to even play live. Like I'm a guitar player at heart. Same here. And so, like, it it translates. You know how to play guitar. You can pretty much pick up, like, piano and and uh, and, and play with that. And so I can um, – I, actually, I even, shouldn't even say this uh, on the internet. don't want to reveal all my secrets. But, like, I, I'm no, no, like, Billy Joel. I'm not, like, you know, some piano <laughs> virtuoso. But I can record something that will make you think I am. So that's all that matters. Yeah, that's the way it works. You know, you're in the box. Yeah, but that's everything. Like, I'm not a piano player. Uh, I know, I know the chords, I know the notes, but I'm not yeah. playing a song on that thing. That's that's the sprinkles. Do you play by you ear know? a lot? I, I'm a play by ear person. Yeah, I learned I learned that way, and then like I'm a mostly guitar player, like a singer songwriter type of thing. You know, three chords in the truth type of thing. <laughs> you know, but um, uh, but yeah, I I have the backtrack, and then that thing I'll be able to do pads on, so it has a hold function and has an arpeggiator. So the hold function is really cool because you could have your little drum track or whatever going, and then you just press a C chord, yeah. and then you just press a D chord, and you press, you know like so like you don't even have to really play. Yeah. You know, and it's made for that because it's an accessory, so it's made for live playing. So then you can focus on your performance and just kind of like note around with that thing. Even noting around scares the shit out of me, and I don't no, want to do it. It's yeah. a lot, and that's that's what I'm trying to back off from. Especially like, if you're playing guitar and singing, and then you gotta like, 
Like, I know people do that, and they're amazing, and I'm not one of those people, so I don't know. About I think that. it's more than saying alone is, is, you know, I'm, I've been doing that for a long time, but, like, that's it's tough to learn that, you know, because you're, you're singing, and you're playing guitar, and you're trying to perform. You're not just getting it done. You try to, you try to make it a show, you know? Okay, yeah. I mean, I uh, think that's a pretty fucking rad. Um, oh, you know what? Um, favorite so favorite sense. Um, why you're? I know you, you mentioned bought, something that was you bought, you bought the that awesome. You bought like the the grandma or whatever. You returned it. I yeah. Um, I didn't like the fact that I had to like patch cables every time I wanted to change the sound. Yeah, yeah, and dude, that's a big, that's a big scent. I love that. I mean, I, I, yeah, like aesthetically, it's cool and it's very, very fun. But um, I had to face a lot of truth with that scent and come to the reality that I, yeah, I am not that guy. Like, yeah, I like yeah. digital, I like digital workstations. Yeah, um, yeah. I didn't know I was a workstation guy, so I bought that scent and was just not having a good time and was like, um, yeah, I bought it. And and it sounded great, and I recorded some stuff with it, and I was like, oh, man, this is exactly, like, what I wanted it to sound like. And um, I just, yeah, like, uh, it just wasn't working out, and then I started having, like, buyer's remorse, and um, ultimately ended up getting returning that and getting a Roland Phantom 6, which is, like, just a mother-effing beast of a workstation. And that one you dig. You like that. Oh, I love it. Like, I – um. I, I would hesitate to call it my favorite, though, and and it's kind of based on, on something you said earlier um, that really struck uh, stuck with me, um, and that is like the one you use the most. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Old faithful, old reliable, and it's like I don't know if the Roland's there yet. I think uh, the Court Prologue is, okay. like, is that for me. Like um, that's just like old faithful. It's the synth I've had the longest, it's the synth I refuse to ever get rid of. Um, it It's on every single album. Uh, like, it's just, like, constantly, and, you know, it's not, not super fancy, like, uh, but it's just very, very solid, has, has, has a decent arpeggiator. Um, the synth bass sounds are really, really great. Or they're probably my favorite. Even, at, at, like, the Roland Phantom has tons of them. But I still always come back to the prologue because I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah, that sounds nice. Um, 80s chimey stuff like uh, it's got that in spades. Um, it, the only thing it doesn't really do well that I really wanted was I really wanted that like um, bogey analog sounding buzzy synth, right? Yeah. Um, and can't really get that with the prologue, and so the, the Roland has a lot of stuff that's you know. He sounds like that, and I just got a Matrix Brute. Oh uh, yeah, those are cool. It's a it's a total space machine. Um, is that a monophonic it, it kinda, synth? What's that? Is that a monophonic synth? The Brute? I have I don't know. I haven't played enough to even know. I just do you want to play it. one note at a time, or can you play chords on it? You can play chords. Okay. Um, yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah, I. I it's uh, probably the one I played the least. It's the newest. Um, but yeah, it's very. It's, it it kind of complements. Like I got the digital workstation, old faithful, and the prologue, and then the Matrix Brute is the uh, the freak machine. Uh, yeah, that, that you need to do all sorts of crazy stuff with. I did get a Novation Summit too, oh. and I haven't really um, explored that one as much. Um, I don't know if it. It's like a. Def- um, definite thing that has a high learning curve, but for me, I think it does. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, it's, yeah, I don't feel super comfortable, so I haven't really even put it on anything. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I had a sense problem, like, buying, like, all sorts of... Yeah, yeah. Dude, you're st- stacked with stints. Yeah, I think uh, for a while there, I had, like, eight, and I was like, this is out of control. And uh, My problem so, was, so I got, like, that one I got... Uh, uh, Behringer MS1, which is really a cool, big monophonic synth, uh, poly, uh, monophonic synth. But the thing is, like, like, like I said, I, you're, you said you work in the digital workstation, right? Do you, yes. 
play these synths into your DAW, or do you mostly work on a on a like a MIDI controller? I play them directly into the DAW. And do you send the timing out to them to the clock? Um, no. So you play them mostly live into the DAW over what over clicks or whatever. That's play awesome, them, dude. Play them live into the DAW. Uh, I I am like even though I'm not like like I said very good like kind of old school in that way. Like I want to like play it live. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to. I want to capture. I, I I don't want it to be super robotic. Um, so I mean, maybe you know, if you get an arpeggiator and you're playing it live, all you got to do is just like hit it on time. Yeah. It's not really that hard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like um, like any any leads or whatever I play, like yeah, it's um, gotta gotta get that take right. That's awesome. So, uh, yeah, so I always uh, always do that. Um, but now I've got it down to four. I got I got four cents. And I think each one of them you do, you know, complement the sound. I, I don't think there's, like, I mean, never say never. But uh, right now, uh, I don't feel like there's a sense out there that it's like, oh, this will provide me something that I can't do here. So yeah, it's yeah. like, that was always the goal. It was like, well, what if I want to do, you know, some Ozma and rental sounding shit or some, like, really alternative stuff with some Moog sounds or I wanted to do really digital or like you know something orchestral like uh like i want to to have all those options at my fingertips so um awesome. i feel like i do so that makes me pretty excited yeah i mean with that variety of equipment that you have you can you can explore you know almost anything anything at that point right yeah i have, I have a bad habit of like uh <laughs> shooting first and asking questions later as far as like like <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, let's try. The reviews are legit. Let me try it out and uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then finding out the hard way. That at least like it was good. Like that they re you you were able to return that other one. You know, it was a pain. And they asked to the ship back. Let me tell you. That. Yeah. Did, All right, for those did you have to track, pay for the shipping? I did not. Um, no, I did it through like uh, what's a place that makes you do like interest free payments or whatever. I don't know. Um, so are you going to do another physical, like, uh, cassette type of release? Yeah. Um, I got, yeah. I got here. I don't know who's all going to watch this, but I'm officially, oh yeah, there we go. Get your in the, uh, arc, arc. That was like the first, like 2020 pandemic album. Um, since I don't work for this company anymore, I can say all this stuff. Um, I worked in marketing at the time for Bowflex, right? Awesome. And, uh. At, at the time, since it was like this pandemic and everyone was buying like home uh, fitness equipment, we like sold out of everything. So yeah, yeah. there were no marketing campaigns, and I was like, didn't have anything to fucking do. And so um, I was just immediately like, I'm gonna just make music all day. And um, so the year uh, 2020, yeah, like I sat back and recorded that album and ended up like surprising myself and really loving it and believing in it and saying like, Oh man, I'm going to put this out on physical media. This is cool. Um, so, uh, that, that, that was the first like real step into like, because I, I'd done stuff before that, but it was very much like a side project, like happy, happy sort of thing. And, um, <laughs> that was the first one that I like really like put everything I had into it. And so I love that album. Um, but yet, to, yeah, uh, yes. So, um, me and um, Grace from Horror Fashion Review uh, are we did a collab, uh, and I just released the first single from that. Dude, that's called Adrenaline. That new song is awesome. I just picked that up on Bandcamp. Oh, hey, 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 that was you. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, I paid over yeah, the suggestion. Just did sixty nine cents, but you know, you're doing the Lord's work. I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> no, like I, uh, that that whole project, like uh, we we are releasing on cassette, of course. Um, it's an instrumental, all synth wave. Um, I actually had a goal to not use a guitar uh, in <laughs> the 
album because I'd never done that before, and that sounded like a fun thing to do. Um, so yeah, like completely synth wave, completely um, dancey. There's ten uh, two minute like tracks that are inspired by like '80s fitness scenes and videos. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and the cool part about it is, is uh, Grace is mixing, she mixed the video to sync with it. Okay. So, uh, and so there'll be a VHS release too. And um, Love that. The, first, Love that. the first video is just a clip from her VHS of what that whole thing's going to be like. But I've seen the whole thing and yeah, it's like, takes it to the next level it's amazing front to back like everything just syncs up <laughs> like she went yeah um, yeah next level with like uh mixing the video to it so um so very excited about that so like uh that's coming out that, that whole thing comes out july 27th and we, we are like digitally and everywhere and that's when the cassette and vhs will come out and we're throwing a big party in uh vancouver at vice beer oh it's awesome doing a screening Listening party, Dude. having the cassettes and tapes there, Thanks, like it's gonna be, it's gonna be I awesome. Love that. Yeah, man. I feel like, like I. So seen, when are like, you slated for that release? What's that? When are you slated for that release? What are you looking at? Oh, July twenty seventh is the. Oh, very cool. official. Very cool. It's like, it's already all been submitted. It's done deal. That's the date. How many tracks? Ten. Ten, Ten tracks. No, that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's that's what I want to do on my next one. I'd like to go to ten tracks. Um, you know, no, but the sound is awesome. I like I like the direction. You know, I, I you know, I like uh, what you're doing with that. You know, you. I really dig the 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 first this first cassette too. But is this one going to be on physical? Forever bogus. Oh, I'm sorry. Damn. <laughs> Fuck you. Uh, yeah. Um. Yeah. So uh, it'll be cassette, and it'll be. Uh, uh, VHS. Awesome. Oh yeah. I, I think, uh, you get it on Bandcamp. Uh, uh, we don't know yet. So we're we're throwing this party, and we're bringing what we have there, and whatever is left will All be right. online. And I, I, I think they, they'll be. They'll they probably one be of online. <laughs> but yeah, like um, the the idea is to uh, like you know um. You know, maybe people love it so much that we we sell it up there. But if not, then we have then we'll put it out on Bandcamp yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, physical media all the way. And uh, the one interesting thing about the ten track thing is uh, every track's like two minutes long. Oh, quick so album. Whole, yeah. So the whole thing that was that was also a very interesting challenge. It was like it was how she wanted to mix the video. And kind of an idea we came up with because we want, like, I didn't necessarily want a song and a vibe to for the the video part of it to last for like a three four minute window. Yeah. Like I wanted it to be very quick and on to the next idea. So I learned a lot and like <laughs> pop song structuring and getting out of my comfort zone. Um, and not just doing like first chorus, first chorus. Like yeah, yeah. sometimes it's first chorus and then just goes off the rails for a minute. <laughs> so but that's cool, you know. I, I I dig, you know, like songs like uh, you know, um, I really like the Jesus and Mary chain, and they do some songs like um, where when you listen to it the first lesson through, it feels like a verse chorus song, but then you realize like every part feels like a different chorus, and they have like okay. four parts. That yeah. are all different chorus parts, almost, you know. And that's cool. Uh, that's, I gotta uh, sing you a song that I really like by them. That that I gotta write this down. I do because it's like artists that can do that, like artists that can um, write a full, you know, not be so formulaic and, and write a song where they they do have like four chorusy feeling parts that all feel like they fit, but it's not. I'm not uh, that guy. I'm, I'm the other guy. Like I'm a very Verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus, chorus, yeah. kill it. Like, because that's my, you know, that's where I call well, my yeah, background. That's, that's, that's what we like and what we, what like, for as a listener, I always like, um, I don't know if I say it so much anymore, but I used to believe that, like, 
the chorus is the reward. Like every time a chorus, a chorus busts out, it should be the biggest, catchiest thing ever. And yeah. the verse is just the journey there. And um, then it's so good that you want to do it again. And so um, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I try to get out of those. I, I, I do like, I, I, one of the things that was really excited me about this is every like new project is always like a challenge. Like, what, what have I not done before? Um, you know, Arcade Academy, I think, was like a concept album front to back that I released on vinyl. And then yeah. the Marnie album was like, can I write and mix and master for a different vocalist? Um, and then uh, this next one is like, can I, can I write really short songs? songs that fit into this like video mix and also be instrumental and have no guitar and so every everything like i i always like take on us the new thing it's like there's always got to be the element of like i've never done it before and um i want to try that out um that, yeah, that, yeah. that keeps it exciting Dude, that's and that, that's that those are great challenges to give yourself because that's when i always say like you learn things when you're not trying to learn the specific thing like yeah you you're trying to learn problem d so you have to learn how to do a b and c yeah so when you say you set a goal for yourself you inadvertently get really good at these other things or have to go through those yeah, so that's yeah. that's where you grew you know? I, I didn't know that i thrived off that sort of thing but i found out it was through doing this that i do yeah. you know and uh, so yeah it's like uh Whatever the next thing after this is, is going to be, um, oh, I guess I can give a teaser. Um, so, so the next album after all this will be completely different than all this. But so we're doing uh, the, uh, the VHS, the cassette for the uh, fitness themed instrumental synthwave stuff, right? Um, somewhere in the next, like, I don't know if it'll be the summer or the fall, whenever it comes out, but uh, I did a song for uh, Pool Party Massacre 2. Oh, sick. <laughs> and um, it's the heaviest death metal song I think I've ever written in my entire life. It's screaming vocals, double bass, Amazing. shredding. Yeah. My boy Tanner doing the uh, double tap and solos. Um, yeah, yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> just completely out of left field but again it was like another thing that was like when that that opportunity came up to, to do that it was like well what what belongs in this movie and it's like it's not a it's not a synthwave track like it needs to be heavy fucking metal and it and i actually <laughs> submitted a song to him um uh before the pandemic for it and then that that kind of interrupted things and then like three or four years later uh i think it was like in january or sometime in the the winter he hit me up was like we're filming in april and i was like oh yeah about that i submitted the song and um i think i can do better <laughs> so oh, wow. and um because I, I never felt like what i submitted was like heavy enough or fit the the, the vibe of the movie so yeah so I don't know when that comes out. Um, I think it'll kind of depend on the whenever the movie comes out. But I haven't really that. That's like that's awesome. Man. Yet. Very so, cool. And I'm not going to tell anybody else. So in order to hear that information, you're going to have to watch it here. So you're going to have to see this on. If you're not here right now, you have to watch this on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Um, so so is, is that your background? That. Sound? You that? come from like a metal background? <laughs> is it that obvious? Um, because you know what's cool about the synth, the synth thing is that it's this convergence of people from all of these different backgrounds. Like I'm from a singer-songwriter background, but there are people from like dancey backgrounds. There are people from metal. And you can hear kind of where they're coming from, but it's it's all cool, man. It's all cool, cool stuff. Like, and I love the 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 that vein of it that comes yeah. from the, you know, metal stuff. Yeah, I am a recovering metalhead. Um, back in the in my twenties, I was in like death metal bands. Yeah, yeah, and did that whole thing. And um, 
I still like it, obviously. It's, it's in everything I do. Like, like there's always an element of um, oh, yeah. metal or rock to it. And um, so, yeah, that, that never dies. I, I joke and say recovering metalhead, but it's like I still love playing it. And um, I, I don't necessarily like, uh, like, like writing songs like that exclusively, but I'll tell you what, the Pool Party Massacre song, was super fun and um you know who knows maybe there'll be another one but like um but yeah like arcade academy has some really metal elements uh even the marnie album has some has breakdowns and, and some chugs here and there so it's like it never fully no but that, that's good that's good do you like uh like carpenter brute oh yeah yeah like uh like dark waves sort of stuff because that reminds me of like that vein of like okay metal synth wave type of stuff you know yeah I, I, that whole vibe like i i do like that a lot and it's like i i haven't been able i don't feel like i've been able to like capture that myself uh for, in a sense yeah like i feel like that's what they're doing they're capturing this really like dark metal vibe in a synthesizer and um i, I don't feel like i've i've gotten to a place where i can recreate that or, or do that myself and so yeah, that could be that could be an interesting challenge for sure. Like, because um, so, I do like that sort of music, and it's like um, I, I I like what they do, but I definitely like yeah for, for whatever reason like can't wanna, you know keep you too long. We, we got time for like one or two more topics, I think. Um, but what is your uh, like? What kind of metal are you into? Because like I wasn't a metal person growing up. I was more into like like classic rock, folk music. Yeah. And like uh, pop punk stuff. Okay. Punk rock. Yeah, love it. But uh, I got into metal later in life, and now I'm more like into like uh, I guess '80s metal. You could say like Judas Priest. I like a lot stuff like that. Yeah. I never got into the 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 newer stuff. But what kind of what kind of bands do you like in that genre? What's cool? See, I don't even want to talk about this because I'm going to be heavily judged. Um, you will be heavily life... judged. You mean? <laughs> My, right, my you don't have metal, to, but what do you think? My metal, like, like, listening these days is all nostalgic. Um, okay. So it's like, stops in, like, the year 2000. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it's like, before that. Um, I think my my favorite uh, is, like, I love Fear Factory. Okay. Um, okay. I love their, like, uh, you know, super crisp double bass, like insane double bass, but then they'll bust into a new wave synthy chorus. Like, it's insanely heavy, um, yet super melodic. And I've, I've always loved the precision of them. Um, so Fear Factory is probably my favorite. Uh, but there's some synth wave elements to, to that. I think, like, anyone who likes synth wave can see, like, okay, that makes sense. Um, other, uh, I think one of my favorite metal albums is the uh, Parade of Chaos by Zayo, which is very like, very raw, um, very groovy metal. Um, I grew up being really into Danzig. I loved like bluesy metal. Yeah. Um, I really like Helmet a great deal. I think I, I definitely like get drawn to like, which is weird because I don't play that way myself. I don't play bluesy groovy licks a whole bunch a lot I, don't, I just don't do that and uh but i like listening to it people that can and so uh helmet is um is another band that's like always stuck out to me that i really liked uh early machine head there was a period of time where i was like all about cradle of filth all right Kill like, I, have no, I have no frame of reference for metal and it's such what i love about it is that it's such a big world that just exists on the surface of everything forever. Yeah. It never goes away. And there's always a drum, like a giant community of people. Yeah. And that's really cool about it. Every once in a while, something gets pop, but it's really cool that it's just always there. But like, it's something I never delved into, but like now with like the nostalgic stuff, I got into the eighties metal stuff, but I really haven't gotten into like uh, anything past that, honestly. And like, also, I'm a guilty pleasures guy myself, yeah. so like stuff I like is usually cheesy, usually nostalgic, something, something, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so maybe we should end with that. Like, uh, 
what's your uh now that we're a couple beers deep i don't break out no. real stuff um ultimate like guilty pleasure uh musically where it's like you're not gonna roll through the mall parking lot with the windows down necessarily um you're just gonna enjoy it to yourself not an ounce it's the whole neighborhood you know what i uh have to admit and and you know what i've been thinking this to myself if everybody admit like acts like they all like creed all of a sudden I, i'm allowed to say that you know the google dolls are not big. oh dude their like their first album is there are parts that are like borderline like early nineties hair metal, naked. Well, um, it, it, they're all over the Freddie's Dead soundtrack. Yeah, and they were a metal band and then they transitioned yeah. into. Uh, but the first album, you know, album, like that's that sound is there, like um, that like uh, kind of hair metal y sound is yeah. mixed in with name and other stuff, and they completely transitioned after that. But I do love their first album a great deal. I think like my guilty pleasure stuff right now is kind of like all that 2000 stuff that you didn't want to say you liked at the time, but like, yeah, that's like Google dolls. Um, I'm into, um, I can't think what else was around that time. That's, that's sort of like that, like a uh, matchbox 20. Okay. Like it's cool tunes. Like it's just like, so that's, that's for me. I feel like that falls in that vein. Okay. You know, it's cool tunes, man. Like, and that's my, like, you know, I know how maybe it's ironic. Maybe it's not anymore with like, what's the other band everybody's all of a sudden into that was supposed to be bad, but now they're not all of a sudden Creed. And, um, what's the other one? Like, like um, I forget, but there's another band. Everybody's like, they're good. I, I know there's like a there's the Limp Biscuit re Renaissance going. No, nah, but the, the Limp Biscuit Renaissance. But I feel like that was always something. Um, it starts within. I don't know. What, I'll, I'll think of it. But yeah, so that's for me. It's it's that stuff. I, I really like that. Like like uh, like dude. Like early two thousands, late nineties. Like like singer songwriter. Like folk rocky, like Dido, I like a lot. Okay, you know it's like no, but that dude, they're cool songs. Like they they knew how to write a fucking song back then. Like yeah, solid earworms. You know, there's definitely something about that sound that is uh, distinctly like that era, and I think any any music that falls into like like falling into a, a category is like well, that's definitely. 2002 that's definitely 1997 yeah i really always appreciate it. um do mint sounding songs too like i think my, my biggest uh guilty pleasure is uh, uh it's kind of cheap. like uh meatloaf is probably my biggest but not like not like um Paradise everybody, by the loves, Dance everybody Dance. loves bad out of hell right um yeah and maybe bad out of hell too, uh, but uh, I love all the shitty albums in between that everybody hated. Good. Um, I think it's called Blind Before I Stop. Um, that that album is really hair metally over the top, theatrical. Fucking oh, yeah? terrible. Uh, love that album. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of like anything '90s that would be in that. Uh, oh yeah. Um, I like the uh, the Bjork song. Um, it's a cover song. I need to look it up real quick. Bjork. My um, forget. I, I, there was another one I was going to mention. Um, eighties one. Oh, you know what? I like the Misfits. You're not supposed to like. I really love oh, Famous okay. Monsters. Okay. You know, I actually bought that CD and returned it oh. because that was, that was allowed back then. Um, but I, was, I was so disappointed that it wasn't Danzig. Uh, but, but it's so like it hits so many points for me at my in my life right now. It's like it's Halloween. It's rock and roll. Whatever the Bjork song is, the 
Do you fall in love? Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Like, uh, it's been like an old, like, uh, older cover, but uh, love that, that cover of that song. And I, like, you know, like, I'm not going to roll around in my car with the windows down, like, jamming off that, but uh, I will enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it is. And, and I feel like a lot of that as I get older is, like, fades away. It's kind yeah, of like. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, yeah, you get to a point where you're like, you don't give a fuck anymore. Like, just like what you like, and uh, music, music, and if you like it, then hell yeah. Uh, and like, you know what? You Honestly, like and... those songs are catchy for you for a reason, and you can learn something from either how they produced it or how it's structured and contribute it to your own music. You know? Yeah. Um, I have to go to the bathroom really bad again. So, so we're gonna like. I'm sorry, folks. Like. I can't hang. No, it's good. No, we we, we could. Uh, we're good. I'm going to uh, say. Not what it used to be. I'm going to say thank you very much for coming on the Louvers Happy Hour. Um, this was an time. awesome episode. Yeah, man. We we had a lot of topics that we didn't get to yet. So obviously, I'd like to have you back again. Yeah, that'd be great. I, I think we could. If if I didn't have to pee, we could go on for another like two hours. So. Yeah. You just get the stadium, buddy. You know what that is? <laughs> no. <laughs> Look it up. <laughs> um, but honestly, man, thanks a lot. Um, looking forward to the to the new release, and uh, yeah, we should come up with some other things, some other shticks to do over the over the over the live because it was a good time, and I think that um, I think that we could come up with some cool stuff. I agree. Let's do it. All right. Do All it. right, dude. Have a good night. I'll talk to you soon. I think you can.